A forgotten dynasty, a lost capital and an all-powerful queen who dominated this landscape 1,600 years ago. Indian history is full of some great stories and we are tracing them. We start from the heart of India quite literally. We are 60 kilometers from Nagpur and this is behind me is the fort of the Bhosles who ruled from here. But archaeologists excavating in the region have found evidence of an ancient city which they believe could have been the capital of the Vakatakas 1600 years ago. It is nice to be in an actual excavation site. For the last three years, a joint team of Maharashtra's archaeology department and Pune's Deccan College have been excavating here at Nagardhan. In deep trenches such as this, they have been able to go even further back, getting pieces of pottery, coins and structures from even earlier, from 3,000 years ago. The historians in this region of Vidarbha and Maharashtra was, uh, surveyed this area in literary sources and mentioned that this Nandi Vardhan could be Nagardhan. In the basic survey, we got some uh, uh, stone images of Vishnu and uh, in 1980s, we found some of the uh, bronze images of Buddhas, which are very similar to the Gupta Vakataka age. In the site, how that is uh, expansion up to a kilometer area. You can see the kilometer is too huge to excavate. And we divided this locality, divided this area into few localities, and we have dug up some certain trenches over there. So in that area, we found uh, some of the area we have got massive brick structures. You can see the 1.5 meter thick wall running near about 16 meters. It's a big one, and over that structure we got the ceiling of Prabhupada Gupta. And this huge structure, it is certainly not uh, for the domestic use. It was some kind of palace or some kind of a royal structure. Other area uh, of the, that castle, we are some got some commercial structure where we find ivory workshop. The site of Nagarthan formed part of a triangle that was pretty much the center of activity during the Wakataka period. Five kilometers from here is a still popular pilgrimage site of Ramtek and further is the site of the ancient city of Mansar, where archaeologists have found a very large city, which was a capital after Nandivarthan. The Vakatakas are mostly forgotten outside history circles. They picked up the pieces after the collapse of the Satvahanas. And the most famous thing about this Vakataka capital is that this is where the famous Gupta emperor Chandragupta II sent his daughter Prabhavati Gupta as a bride. At the Keval Narasimha temple in Ramtek, you can see how this queen dominated this area. This temple was even named after her. Interestingly, part of Prabhavati's dowry, or maybe entourage here, was the famous Sanskrit poet Kalidas. This matrimonial alliance further had brought a very uh, drastic or very important or significant change in the contemporary religious politics. They turned to Vaishnavism. Ramtek seems to be at the kind of religious center uh, which uh, evolved during the uh, time period of Prabhati Gupta. It is a scenic beauty from this hilltop in Ramtek that must have inspired Kalidas to pen his famous classic, the Meghadoot. Today there is a shrine to his memory here. You can even read the verses from his great work. It is amazing if you think that the great poet Kalidasa might have walked into an enclosure like this uh, 1600 years ago. Shops and workshops like this would have been bustling with activity in Kalidasa's time. But the most mysterious find in the site has to be this, a haunting collection of large urns inverted and filled with broken pots. While the final excavation report from here is awaited, Virag says that these could have had religious importance. Uh, see, uh, this big urns is very enigmatic for us from last three seasons, last two seasons. So these big urns were actually kept, some of their uh, kept uh, normally and most of them were kept inverted nature. There is no domestic purpose there, there is no structure, there is no coins, there is no ceiling, any other, any other feature that could be, uh, we can understand it is a religious or kind. So in the area near about 200 meters from here, last year we also get the same structure but the, we got a small uh, miniature uh, female figurines inside the pot. So that area could be uh, used as a religious but this area we did not yet uh, yet confirm what is it but it's very close to be some kind of offering to someone or we got a small figure of Naigameshi. So Naigameshi is a female goddess worship for you know the childbirth. 
we also assume that the shape of the pot is very similar to the woman womb so maybe this pot could be have offer for you know the, for child possibilities and their good willingness interestingly while archaeologists are excavating the area they tell me a lot of leads come from local villagers while they don't know the antiquity of the area around they do have a sense of its past it is in the form of uh, these small folk stories or legends which have been preserved in their memories like if uh, i'll tell you a couple of instances about it like people have preserved in their memory about uh, a legend about the shiva temple in the village there is a medieval shiva temple so people have in their memories that this shiva temple was there because of the uh kings which were existing in this place and they in the the villages around also the surrounding villages also they uh, tell us that this was a very big this village of nagradhan was a very big city and some king was ruling over here that is what our ancestors have told us it probably was we will have to wait for the final report of the excavation at the end of this year but this site already proves how important this region was over 1000 years ago